Hey there everyone, welcome to a new video. My name is Harmon. Uh, in today's video I'm documenting the tragic massacre that happened at a cafe called Cafe Racer. Um, this is located at 5828 Roosevelt Way in Seattle, Washington. And I'm actually here right now standing in front of what used to be the restaurant. Um, I believe it shuttered down in 2018 or so. Um, it, it, I don't think it could withstand the massacre that happened. Um, it just was not able to continue to make any profit. So people have spray painted, graffitied the entire front and side of this building and it just, it's sad. It looks absolutely terrible right now. Um, so what's interesting is there's no memorial or plaque or anything that indicates that four people lost their lives here during that massacre. In this video, I'm gonna document all five people who were killed the four people who were killed here at Cafe Racer, and then a lady who was killed by the same perpetrator many blocks away. She was carjacked and murdered. So doc I'm gonna document all those people who were killed, and then I'm gonna visit uh, at least one of the victim's graves that I was able to find. So anyway, stick with me, let's get into it. The five victims in this story were 52-year-old Joseph Albanese, 49-year-old Andrew Kariakides, 36-year-old Kimberly Layfield, 57-year-old Donald Largen, and 52-year-old Gloria Leonidas. Those were the five victims of this uh, tragedy. Um, there was a sixth person who was injured, um, but five people were killed. So the perpetrator in this Cafe Racer tragedy was 40-year-old Ian Stawicki. And so Ian walked into the Cafe Racer uh, restaurant on May 30th 2012 just before 11 a.m. and Ian had actually been kicked out of the cafe about two or three times in the last week or so due to his uh, pretty uh, bad behavior. Um, he was not acting uh, appropriately, um, kind of causing uh, issues with other patrons and uh, I think he was drunk um, on a few of those occasions and so he was just kind of being belligerent and so anyway the the owner of the cafe racer kicked him out two or three times in the last week and so when he arrived on May 30th 2012 uh, the owner uh, immediately noticed him and said hey you need to leave um, we've told you many times before that you can't come back here and so Ian kind of walked uh, kind of like he was going to leave, uh, but he turned around and got his gun out and shot the first victim in the back of the head. Um, and the victim kind of blocked the entrance. A few patrons grabbed some of the barstool chairs and tried chucking them at Ian, trying to, you know, trying to stop him from shooting people. Um, but Ian walked over to where the bar was and shot uh, the remaining three victims. Uh, where they sat in in the bar area. There's some surveillance footage of Ian just standing there after he shot the four people to death. Um, it shows him just standing there inside the, the cafe with his gun. It's pretty chilling actually. Um, but if you can kind of make it out in the far back corner, you might be able to see that there's like a wood uh, kind of half circle uh, seating bar area where they would, you know, people could go sit out at, at the bar. So after he killed the four victims in the cafe, Ian actually either took a bus or he took a vehicle. Um, they are they actually aren't sure how he got down uh, to downtown Seattle, but either way he. Uh, made it about five miles south of the cafe uh, where he ended up bumping into uh, the fifth victim, Gloria Leonidas. And Gloria was in the parking garage and Ian went and killed her. 
um, he murdered her right there in the parking lot um, in order to steal her um, her car all right guys so I'm at Sunset Hills Memorial Park and this is the cemetery where uh, 52 year old Gloria Leonidas is buried um, again uh, she was the fifth victim uh, in this tragedy So about five hours after the shooting spree began, around 4 p.m., police actually saw him walking down the road in downtown Seattle. A police officer matched the surveillance footage of his clothes and his face and knew uh, that this was the guy who started the shooting and killed the five people. And so an uh, officer got out, told him to get on the ground, but that's when Ian took his own gun and shot himself in the head, killing himself right there on the pavement. So after Ian killed the five people and himself, uh, detectives were able to talk to Ian's brother. And Ian's brother said that Ian, I guess, was just angry at, at everything. And apparently he said that Ian also had um, several different mental illnesses and that Ian refused to to go to treatment or to you know to fix what was going on in his head. Those things combined with the fact that he was just kind of angry at everything and my guess is probably because he was kicked out of that cafe several times in the previous week I think he just decided just to take out his anger you know on on the people inside the cafe. That's just kind of what I've gathered through everything that I've read. Um, Ian's brother also mentioned that uh, when he heard about this tragedy, he mentioned that um, it was no surprise that his brother was the one who committed the murders. They attempted to get him into a mental health facility and try to get him to take medications, but apparently Ian just refused all of that and just basically con just continued just to live his life uh, without any of those uh, things to help him. So before the tragedy took place, Ian actually was arrested twice. Uh, once in 2008 for uh, domestic violence assault on his uh, girlfriend at the time. That charge was dismissed. In 2010, he was arrested for a fourth degree assault. However, that charge was also dismissed. Because of that, uh, he was still able to legally acquire the several handguns that he used in the massacre. Why did they dismiss both of those cases against him? I'm not sure, but if he was found guilty of either one of those, he would not have been allowed to, to be able to have a firearm. Um, but I feel like anyone who's really uh, honed in and wants to kill people, I feel like there, there's always a way that they're going to be able to do so. They're, they're going to find a way to get weapons illegally or legally, uh, depending on if they're allowed to or not. So I don't know. Either way, it's just a terrible tragedy that occurred. Um, five people, again, innocent people lost their lives that day. Anyway guys, just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Um, again, my name is Harmon. Uh, if you appreciate me going to all these different places and showing you different crime scenes and grave sites, uh, just make sure you subscribe and uh, leaving a like is always appreciated. Um, but anyway, until next time guys, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.